Greetings, unsettled souls! Go! Go? Kind of, it kind of went. Friends, welcome to the correct news. Friend, it, it, ah, this is this is crazy. I wanted to mention this because I don't want to do every not every story I do to be, you know, Afghanistan doom, gloom, terrible. This struck me as something that would be worth talking about today. It's from the drive. Radio transmissions from police helicopters chase of bizarre craft over Tucson add to the mysteries. Quote, its abilities were pretty incredible. And that was from the FAA audio points to confusion during and after police helicopters encounter with strange craft. I should say that's an aircraft. It's a quote from the, uh, you'll see. On February 9th, 2021, a U.S. Customs and Border Protection helicopter, CBP, encountered what was described as a highly modified drone. There's links all over this article. And it was hovering in controlled airspace above Tucson, Arizona. A Tucson Police Department helicopter was called in to aid the CBP aircraft in its pursuit of the small aircraft. But the drone, or whatever it was, was able to outrun both of them as it flew through military airspace. That's a toughie to pull off. Definitely maneuvered around both helicopters with bizarre agility and ultimately disappeared into cloud cover over the altitude that the helicopters were safe to fly at. Okay, I don't know a lot about drones, but I do know that that's not normal behavior. That is some of the behavior that you find with UFOs. Again, not all UFOs are aliens. Um, I mean, with things that we, with these strange lights and demons, UFOs, ghosts, whatever you want to call them, we don't know. People from the present, people from the past, people from the future, in other dimensions, they're unidentified. Well, now we have drones moving like this. A police report previously obtained by the war zone showed that the TBP crew described the drone as very sophisticated and specialized and able to perform like no other UAS as they had previously encountered. Now we have the actual audio from the CBP helicopter's interactions with air traffic controllers in Tucson during the incident, as well as audio from an after action call between the TVP crew and air traffic control tower. Now, again, these are professionals that we're hearing from here. This isn't just some random person who, you know, can't complete a sentence. These are people that deal with these kinds of things every day. These are experts in the field of aviation and drone technology and military security and things like that. These are not hacks. From the conversations heard on the recording, which the war zone obtained from the Federal Aviation through the Freedom of Information Act, it's clear that all parties involved with the incident were baffled by the drone's performance, noting that it appeared, quote, super sophisticated and possibly satellite controlled. Well, that's great, since we know that everyone from China to North Korea has mastered this technology. It's a lot cheaper than nukes. It's a lot cheaper than spy planes, for that matter. If you haven't yet caught on the Tucson Mystery Drone Saga, be sure and read the most recent report, and you can find the link here. You can see it. In the air traffic control recording of the 70-minute-long incident, the CBP helicopter crew member can be heard describing the drone as a dim flashing light. Again, that's like UFOs, is it not? It also notes that he cannot track it while wearing night vision goggles. In the call, that, that's strange. In the call, the helicopter crew repeatedly identifies the drone's location as directly above Davis Monument Air Force Base, base, or the fuel tanks just west of the base. The crew can be heard wondering what the unarmed air vehicle size might be repeatedly stating that its high speed and impressive maneuverability made it difficult to get a decent visual identification, and throughout the hour-long pursuit, the law enforcement air crews can be heard, it says, saying that the mystery aircraft was essentially playing with them, purposefully trolling them, by repeatedly positioning itself directly above their helicopter's rotors, 
some 1,000 feet above them. Let me pause. Long-time listeners will remember that this was a stunt which Russia liked to do to American airplanes with their airplanes when they were, you know, war, uh, trying to bait us on the, uh, the border. Many people will remember that was a number of years ago. That's a Russian, I'm not saying these drones are Russian, but that's a Russian stunt. That's what Russian pilots do to antagonize those in NATO and in U.S. and those who Putin feels the need to try to flex a little muscle with. At one point, around 6.55 in the runtime of the recording below, the air traffic controller says, we filled this up as high as we can, and we did call Washington, presumably meaning the federal office in D.C., uh, possibly FAA headquarters. So 60.55, eh? Hold on, give me a minute. Here we go. second recording, a phone call between air traffic control tower at the Tucson International Airport and the TDP helicopter crew reported the day after the encounter. The helicopter crewman notes that the drone maintained a speed of 75 knots and a 30 knot headwind. That's pretty impressive. So you think it was a drone, the Tucson tower employee asked during the call. Yes, it was, def it was definitely a drone, the TDP helicopter crew replied. I just couldn't tell you, I couldn't give you its dimensions as it was moving. Too sketchy to us, too. I assure you it was not a quadcopter, and it was the most advanced drone we've dealt with over the last decade here. Decade, people. Its abilities were pretty incredible. Um, I just, I can't tell you exactly its size. The Tucson Tower employee then asked if it could have been a larger UAV like an MQ-1 Predator. It's not aircraft size, the TDP helicopter crew member replied. Yeah, it probably would have broken apart if it was doing terms like that, you would assume, unless it was a UFO. From what I can tell just from its position light, you know, I would have to imagine it was larger than a quadcopter. Copter. I guarantee you it was nothing like a quadcopter from how long it was up. It has, been, it has to be satellite driven because there's no line of sight. Yeah, where's it charging at? to stay up there that long and burn at those speeds. There's no cell phone coverage that could have dealt with that, so it has to be satellite-driven, which is pretty freaking sophisticated. The helicopter crew member then laments not being able to apprehend the craft, saying he really wanted to see what type of technology was aboard the drone. Hey, it's Chris at TPD. How are you? I'm doing good. Was that uh, you up there helping us out? Uh, well, yeah, I was on the desk doing all the paperwork, but uh, my coworker Miguel was really helping me out on the frequency. Okay, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, I appreciate your guys' help on that. I was. It's enough to establish what I'm saying here. These are professionals. Um, it says that uh, there's a lot more on this in the article, but um. Pilot of Troy 164 reported an MAAC on frequency 18.3. And people are going to ask about that. That's where you can find the, the, I guess, the raw data, if you will. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment lines. Thank you for listening, friends. Please switch to Opera News. Make sure you're catching the show there. Good night. God bless. Get a hold of me at the correct views at hotmail.com.